<laughs> we got to replace the Tweety Bird, Sean. Hi, everybody. This is Ginger Cook, and uh, welcome to Acrylic Painting Monday. And uh, my husband, John Little, and I will be um, making this whole show work. And uh, if you if you're watching this if you're watching this video with a part of a live group, if you have questions for me. I can't see whatever you write. Okay, some people don't realize that. I have no idea what you're writing. But John does, and the mods do. And if the mods know, which we want to welcome them to, hi mods. Hi mods. They, a lot of times they will answer you, and that's 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 got to be okay. And if you, but you got to put your questions in capital letters. Today we're going to be painting a downhill skier. You know, um, I learned to ski. Uh, oh gosh, when I was a, you know kid, you know going to grade school, I learned how to ski, and my sister did too. In fact, my sister was a downhill racer, and. Um, a lot of times, it's very difficult to catch the movement. You can paint, paint someone skiing, but to catch the movement. And a, a, a artist you might want to look up is Leroy Neiman. He was a, always the Olympic people always hire him to paint their athletes because he does it in very a minimal brushstrokes, just a splash of color. The details where it needs to be, and then the rest isn't. And you can learn a lot from that. And he's been successful for years and years and years just doing you know doing that. So. We're going to do it probably, maybe if not in his style, something like that. We're going to start with a 9 by 12 canvas. Well, if you, you want me to scoot on down, I bet. Yeah, John's going to scoot on down. I scooted and on down. And I've got the, the skier traced on. Now, we'll have the traceables for this available um, later. To do it not right now, it's just probably tomorrow. They'll be available. Our helper that used to, um, to get those up a little quicker is... Uh, no longer with us. I mean, he didn't die or nothing. He just doesn't work for us anymore, right? So, uh, what I'm going to do now is just tell you first about the colors. And they are cadmium orange, cad orange light, naphtha crimson. This is a maroon color. Um, you didn't have that. You could do um, probably red and ultramarine blue would give you something close to that. Uh, there's a, a, a mauve purple. Uh, Ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, phthalo green, burnt sienna, zinc white. Ooh, look at all the little dots I'm making. That's fun. <laughs> yellow um, oxide, cad yellow medium. That could be yellow ochre, cad yellow light, magenta, and of ti course titanium white. There you go. See. And That's they all fun. have dots by them. They all have dots by them, right? So we know we told told you what it was. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We've so, got proof this time. This is where you've got to be very careful. Uh, you've got to get your sock folder brush on and got to be very careful when you are doing because we're going to do details on his face and that's going to take the most time because we're going to do details on his face. I don't know. It just <laughs> takes time, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is take some CAD, a little tiny brush, no water on it. This is a um, one of these Zen brush, art brushes and very, they're designed for detail and I'm going to come in here where his goggles are and I'm going to paint them orange, like that, okay? And then I'm going to do, um, just let that sit there for a minute, get another little brush. Mm. We cleaned up my studio, so I know where everything is now. So that's my theory. What do you think? So then I'm going to take some titanium white. Oh, that's going to be too big a brush for that. See, the whole brush almost does this helmet. So we've got to do little brushes for this stuff, okay? So let's get out our little pot of little brushes. See which ones we want here. Some sort of small little brush. Maybe there's a little, there's a little brush. Let's take that one. And uh, again, I'm not wetting it. I'm going to go ahead and just probably use the paint that's already on here and uh, paint his helmet white first. Uh, he'll have other colors. Might even uh, a little bit of yellow oxide in it too. Not very much, just a touch. So it's sort of an off white. There we go. Okay. And. Uh, then I'm going to do um, kind of a cadmium orange, cadmium red for his um, 
and you know part of his goggles. I'm going to brighten the goggles up a little bit now. Okay. And let's see. Let's take a little bit of the maroon and orange color and mix it. And uh, let's come in here like this where his face is and at least put his, the face, the shape of his face in. I'm going to wet the brush and then wipe it off and then try this because it's got to be, this is the trick here. we got to get his face in here. Try a little bit of mm, Ross, burnt sienna. And I think probably the easiest thing for me to do is just just don't worry about a mouth or a nose at this point. Just make sure I get the this, this shape of it in, of his face, okay? Now you take a little bit of this maroon color, come around the outside, darken this up. Because remember, this is very, it's not really abstract, but it is sort of figurative abstract, wouldn't you say, John? Yes. Now, John wants to know, is John, is John getting a, are you getting an echo when John talks? I haven't been talking. I'm trying not to talk. Okay. Well, if you are, let us know. We, we, we still are t doing our best with the microphones, okay? We'll keep fighting them. So, I'm going to just come on down here like that. And uh, come across here like this. Uh, And uh, the, the, the goggles go up, it's flat, they're flat under his eyes, but they go up in like a little triangle right over his nose. Like that, right? And then I know it's going to be, let's take some blue here. I want to come right next to his face like this, this ultramarine blue. Make that darker yet. Okay. That's not very much that, you know, it's not very much that we're painting, but we've, you know, we, we've got to get that in before we get anything else in. All right. So. Now, so, so we've kind of preserved the shape of that. Let's take some yellow and orange and come on up here like this and do his jacket. First layer of, of um, this parka. First layer of color on this. Something to keep him warm. And notice I'm curving. I don't want a straight line here. I want it to curve. So it's got it like that, just the way we do trees. You don't want to, you don't want to keep, this is a very abstract painting. You want to be careful that you're not just making a straight line, okay? And I um, want to come back behind this head. Then I'm going to switch colors and take some red. And uh, come on this side of his parka like that. Notice I leave a little space for the seams of the blue. I'll come back and put a color there. Then I think I want a little bit of the, uh, let's see, how about a little bit of Genta on this side and a little bit of zinc white, okay? And let's see, on this side he's got, you're not going to see as much of his arm on this side because it's going to be covered in snow, okay? So you just, you just won't see it. So I'll just come down a little further like that. Then I'll go back to the, um, uh, how about some red here? Come on this side. Just doing it in pieces, all right? So I'm going to take a little bit of this orange color. And, ooh, that's too, you almost have to, you'll have to, when you're layering the colors, You've got to um, uh, oh, make sure they're dry because you just can't put this light orange on top of that red. It will never show up. It won't do anything. All right. So then again, I'm still blocking in. So I'm going to take some, uh, just blocking in with these colors. You can kind of see how I'm doing that. John, for any questions? 
Oh uh, yeah, can we zoom in a little bit on the painting? And no, we cannot at this time. We are having... The camera broke that does that. Yep. Sorry. Uh, the camera we're, broke. We're doing the best we can with what we got. So we're just sort of... Um, When we do the uh, academy lessons, I'm able to go back and edit it and zoom in and edit the process. Yeah, we can still zoom with academy lessons because John can do it in the editing. That's that's important to know. A shadow red here. This arms. A little bit of maroon here. You can usually go darker over color, even if it's wet. You can say that with something darker right up in here. This side. And the thing about it is that for his legs, what we're doing is just different colors. We're just doing uh, bits of light orange and yellow and all that kind of stuff. And then on the b bottom part there, it's just all in the reds. So we're not really, we're not necessarily even trying to draw his ski pants or his legs in at this point. I'm just going to add some color and shadows and stuff, and that's that will um, uh, it'll make sense when we do the the snow. That's what we're doing here now, right? And so when we do the snow, all of this will make sense. And let's just do this for the. A little pink for the glove. Titanium white and magenta makes a pretty good pink. So those are the first layer of colors that I have for him. It's a little titanium white. Now I want to come up here on his shoulder here and lighten this. And let's see, I want a little of this mauve color here. So what we're doing here is we're applying a skier. And um, it's like when you write a sentence. You've ever seen that where you write a sentence and you leave all the vowels out and people can still read it? That's kind of what we're doing. We're just leaving the vowels out and you're going to still be able to read it. I have enough trouble as it is with English language. I know, John. That's just scary, isn't it? What yeah. are you talking about leaving the vowels? What's she talking about <laughs> leaving the, the vowels, vowels out? Taking what's letters she... away from me? Are you crazy? Yeah, just, you just, I know. So at this point, here's a little blue, a little bit of white with it. That's the zinc white. I think my, my um, brush got too dirty. I have to rinse that out if I want a lighter blue because I just just had purple. Let's try some titanium here. Kind of mix over on my palette. All right, so we have to lift that dry, but maybe we can do something with this helmet while we're doing that. So this is where you can't just go lickety split on, a, on this figure. You have to be really methodical and just do them in pieces, okay? The thalo green and the white and the thalo blue make a beautiful blue, okay? Pretty. Sh so here's this side of his helmet. And uh, now the reason that the blue is so uh, effective with this picture is because, let's see, I think I put my... We reorganized everything, so I think I know where I put my color wheels, too. Don't I, John? Do I? Uh, uh, no. We don't know where I put them? <laughs> no. I don't either, then. Huh. I thought I'd put them away. We organized everything. So good. Except the color wheels. Here, there's a color wheel. You found one? John's going to look. He remembers what we did. I, I know I, we have this one. If you, can you use that? Yeah, we have this one. All right. Do you see how orange is uh, no, it's just, it's not even on this one? That one's not even done right. <laughs> this, this, the colors are off on this. 
You can't, can't use, use that. that one. Can't use that one. All right. Well, John, is, you know, it doesn't matter. On the opposite of the color wheel is um, is uh, orange and, tur and and blue, like blue, orange and turquoise. And so those are good color combinations. So people always say, well, can I paint this ski or some other color? Well, yeah, but, you know, the hours go into the thought process of designing this stuff, you guys. Hours. I know that's hard to, that's hard to believe, but um, trust me when I tell you that that's true. And there's a reason why we pick the colors we do and in the academy, in our academy tutorials and all of that, it's a reason why we do that. And it's because, oh, here we go. Here, John found the color. Where did we have those? In the drawer that you loaded. Oh, in the drawer I loaded. Did, did you hear that? The drawer, <laughs> in the drawer I loaded. All right, so here's the orange. And, you know, here's the orange right here, and here's the turquoise. You see that? Right there. So that's a, and that's a, So if you're going to have a lot of warm t t tones, just a little accent of it, you don't want to go 50-50. But we do want to... This background's going to have all kinds of purples and some beautiful colors in it. Trust me. Can you hold on one second? Uh, I'm holding on one second for John here. I have to manually move things now. Now, can you go to the left a little bit? Okay. John's just moving stuff around a little bit. Oh. Let me just um, put that up on the top there. I'll move all this over there. Okay. That'll work. All right. Does that work? a little better. Excellent. We always like it when it's a little better. Yes and yes. Well, now your head's in the way. Oh, that's no, that's what I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong camera. Wrong television. There we go. There you are, manually adjusted. Let that's the nice, all right. So everybody's pretty happy with that? No, I want everybody to be happy. Yeah, absolutely. So you see we've got, now I can't put the lighter accented colors on here until he dries, but I could say I, um, but some things may have dried by now, like uh, I want something pretty bright in this goggle right there. Ooh, huh? Got it inside of his face right here. And again, we're not trying to do a lot of detail. We're just saying that this is um, our skier. We're far away from him. We wouldn't be able to see his face anyway. We're just going to assume that, he's, that we've got something that works there. And the inside of his goggle comes in here like that. I could use a Posca pen. But we'll just for now. I think that's pretty good, right? So we got, we've got him sort of, uh, pretty much where we want him. Just, just give him a little bit of a thickness. All right. So that's, that's where he is now. To, in order to put him in in the context of the painting, all right. Let's just take a minute and dry him so we don't lose him, okay? Yeah, okay, now when we dry... We dry him. Now, if you were to make this larger, say 24 by 30 or something like that, you know, something pretty big, you'd actually have to put the details in the face. So I probably would suggest you Google the face of a skier with goggles on, something like that, because you would want more details than what we're going to give you here on a 9 by 12. All right. So now we're going to change brushes and uh, we're going to start putting in a background. So up in here in this corner, I want to start with some purple. 
and uh, up here like that. Maybe a little ultramarine blue and purple up here like that. A little bit of that. There we go. So I want something dark up in this corner, and then as I use a little zinc white, okay, let me just get rid of that color. I don't like it here. I have, like it up there, but not there. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of that now. I'm going to start getting some phthalo blue and white, and just trying to just going to uh, put. Okay, that's not the color I want. That put it there, but I realize that that's not the first color I want. I've got to layer this. So the next color I want is sort of um, mauve and uh, white. So I'm going to something like this. Okay. And what, how we're doing this, a little bit of magenta. Okay, and we're doing this very quickly uh, because no two, none of, no two of these will turn out the same. Um, if I did it three times, they'd all look slightly different. Um, but I know that, for instance, I can pretty much tone the colors I want. Uh, and I like to test them over here. Can you see this? You see what I'm testing the color on? It's too light. Might be able to use that up here, but basically that's too light. Uh, uh, let's see, how about some ultramarine blue and magenta? That makes a lovely purple. We've talked about that before. And it doesn't uh, have um, the glaring prop um, problems that uh, say, um, Diazonine purple has. Diazonine purple um, has a tendency to glare. So if you didn't want your diazonine purple to glare, one thing you could do is to put some matte medium, mix some matte medium in the color, and that probably would make a big difference. Okay. So I'm la layering colors. And when I'm layering a darker color, I'm just barely touching it. Try not to dig up paint. All right, and let's take. There you go. Kind of push that away. Now we do have like a blue background here, but um, which is pretty nice and blue underneath. But I want to um, put another coat of that on there. Ultramarine blue is the color of the Atlantic Ocean, ocean. and you want um, you want ultramarine blue red shade and phthalo blue green shade. And if you don't have those colors in that order, then you won't get the color mixture. So some some companies just have phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. They don't have they don't offer shades, and then those will historically be the ones that we're talking about that we want. Okay. So sort of, a, and you notice that there's a lot of movement in the brush strokes, yeah. So as I'm painting this, John, go ahead. I'll answer some more questions. Well, we wanted to know that what pins we've been using, and we've gone to the Aristro, and that is R O, artist R O. So make sure you have that spelling. There's also people going with just wrist O, and that's not correct. I don't understand. I didn't hear any of that. Well, I hope they did. So what, what, what are you asking me? I'm asking you nothing. Oh. I'm answering a question because we could do it and you didn't know the answer off the top of your head. Well, I bet I didn't. That's probably true. <laughs> do you know how to spell the pins that you're using? The artisto, artistos? Yeah. No, not a clue. Nope. That's why I didn't give it to you. Yeah, you notice I've just got yellow oxide up here. Titanium white. And because this blue background is showing through, this sort of works. Now that background was made with phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and titanium. Okay. So, 
A drop of the blues and the rest white. Okay, don't want that. Guess it wouldn't matter, but I just don't want it so I can wipe it off. See, right now he looks like he's um, flying, you know, coming out of, maybe out of a, a parachuting, maybe. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Like, looks like he might be parachuting. So, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> In case you were wondering. In case you were wondering, he's not. No parachuting. No parachuting. So this is this first layer. There's about three layers to this snow. So this is like the first layer. Well, it's deep snow. It, yeah, well, yeah, it's the powder. You know, they always want the powder. I never particularly liked, I was a big skier, I never particularly liked powder. If you're getting a chance to watch our uh, story time uh, stuff, which we will we'll be doing uh, more of this week, um, the, um, <clears throat> I'll, you know, we, well, I'll, I talk about all kinds of stuff, you know, skiing and things that we did. Some of the things I did as a kid that things are so different now and, and how we used to do it. John and I were just watching, uh, we were just flipping through the channels, I think it was yesterday. And um, we saw these, they, it was the, uh, they were going off a ski jump and then doing all the, the snowboard tricks, but with skis. And I'm looking at what the, some of these kids are so young, and I'm looking at what they're doing. And nobody, when I was skiing in the uh, 50s and 60s, nobody could even do jumps and stuff. You know, there was, there was, it was a thing. I mean, nobody could do anything like that. It's really interesting. I have to dry one more time. I hate to tell you that, but I just do. We'll be muted while we do that. Next uh, Monday is Christmas. So um, Christmas comes on acrylic painting Monday. And I was talking to my daughter, Cinnamon, the art sherpa. And um, she and I decided that we would do both do shows on Christmas. Ours will be around 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And Our hers, time, central time. Uh, uh, central time. And um, hers is going to be... I think she thought that her kids and them would, could, they could, her kids could spare her a couple hours before that. So uh, what about three, John, something like that. She will tell you uh, what time she's going, but that's, we thought we'd do it. Now we're, we'll, um, if we could have figured out a way to, for both of us to get on the channel together and do stuff, but we're, we're going to have fun with this. I think we're going to, we're going to talk about, um, uh, uh, Where's my little brushes here? We're, we're, we're going to talk about, um, oh, I don't know what, you know, but wonderful things, right, John? <laughs> you know, I don't know. But it, well, I don't, well, I, I don't think out. it'll be a story. Do you think it'll be a story time, John? I don't think so. I don't think so. I have no Though idea it, what you It could be a story time about, about Christmas, but, you know, you know, you want a happy story about Christmas, and if I had some happy Christmas memories, I'd share them with you, right? So None to come to mind. Um, um, we're, we'll probably talk about something else. And John talked about maybe even taking you all over to the Facebook club. And you said you could do that, right, John? Yeah, I have it set up today. If you we could, to do we it could um, let, let you see what's going on at our Facebook club and what our, what what people are posting. Um, we might be able to, sh you know, um, lots of good stuff we can we can do, right, John? Oh, yeah. We so it was, whatever it is, we're stuff. going to have a good time, and we appreciate you, and we know that um, sometimes it's nice to just maybe somebody got some new paints for the holidays, when they, 
and they want to try them out, John, you know, something like that. You don't know, do you? You just don't. You know, just don't know what um, people will uh, get with. This is zinc white right here. Uh, oh, there's the Artisto pens, right? Yeah, they're the Artisto pens. Somebody wanted to see them. I just have a picture of them. That is what they look like. The new one is the clear tube on the top, the yellow one, and the other one, what they used to be, is the black bodies. Just threw that up there quick as a bunny for you. Well, that was good. Is there some reason why I'm crooked? Oh, you're on the side, yeah. Well, you're, you know, what can I say? I don't know. I'm just... But Let's bring you back, boss. There you go. That better? Mm hmm. Notice that the snow is all kind of going this way, that's following the slant. Did you see that? Sometimes I was doing some personal art coaching today, and I was somebody had painted Santa's nap, you guys, that marvelous picture of Santa in the rocking chair, or some old guy in a rocking chair. It wouldn't have to be Santa. Just. Just it's really called just the fireside. fireside nap, and it kind of looks like somebody who might be Santa, but it could be anybody. Just some old guy with a beard, right, really, honestly. And um, anyhow, they had painted the rocking chair just beautifully, but had the slats going the wrong way, the grooves on the chair at the wrong angle. So he, they had them going vertically, and they needed to be at a slant with the, with the chair. And these are the kinds of things that you want to watch for when you're painting. I think I don't like this brush for this application. These are the kind of things you want to um, you want to ask what what direction, what angle is this being uh, presented to me as? What am I seeing? All right? And and that's you know, which direction is this going? If, if this were a clock, and this was 12 o'clock, and this was 6 o'clock, and this is 9 and 3, is the elbow right at 3 o'clock, or just maybe not quite 3, just a little before 3, that kind of stuff? You can, you can place a lot of things in a painting simply by uh, checking your angles, check your angles, and then your reference angles, and decide where this has to be on your canvas, okay? That's, I think, that's, that's, uh, I think one of the most helpful things ever, John, don't you think so? Oh, absolutely. To, to, to that, that. You gotta keep track of these things. It makes a, a pain believable or not. Well, yeah, it just, yeah, it's, it's the direction. Um, let's see. These pins are like the Posca pins. They're not a felt tip. Excuse me, what? The, the pins are not a felt tip. No, no, they're acrylic painting pins, you guys. Just like Poscas. Just like Poscas, the, but they're fine point and they have more, more colors. colors. I, it's not that I don't like Poscas, but these have, they have more colors. They're more fine print and they have more colors. And we're all about color. You know, I sometimes I want, you know, color. Posca might just not have it, right? Hey, let's give a big thank you to Paige for her donation that came in through a PayPal. Who was that? Paige. Thank you, Paige. Thank you very much. Oh, no, hers was a super chat. A super chat. Okay. Yeah. We thank you for that very much, you guys. Like and for those of who have been watching our um, um, our story time, too, and have just done a little thing, a dollar or two in the super chat, that makes such a big difference. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot. We appreciate it very much. You know? It all adds up. Yeah, it's it's, it's just surprisingly uh, nice. Surprisingly nice. <laughs> well, it is nice, John. I mean, but it is because unexpected. I got you, kiddo. Unexpected circumstances happen to everybody. Yes. You go through the week and you think that they, you know, uh, the everybody thing was working yesterday. Yes. That and was today yesterday. it we isn't. Should have done things yesterday. That was yesterday, right? So uh, those are kind of helpful things. How um, will you be spending Christmas, Ginger, and John? Well, I told you we're going to do a show. 
Yeah, we're going to be working. We're, we're going to be working. We're going to do a show, and then John <laughs> That's and all I, we do. The kids live in Michigan, right? Yeah. The kids Michigan. are in Michigan. All the kids are in Michigan. Everybody's yeah, in Michigan. Yeah, John's son's in Michigan. Uh, Your kids are in Michigan. Mine's in Michigan. My grandchildren are in Michigan. My grandson is, uh, and the granddaughter have taken up wrestling and loving it. And... Uh, It was so cute for my grandson, who's 13. I said, "Well, what, what is it you'd like for Christmas from Grandma?" And uh, I, I know a lot of people wouldn't, won't be called Grandma. You know, for some reason they don't want to, you know, be aged by the name. But I never had a grandmother, and um, I always thought it would be nice to have one. So I thought I could be one for somebody else, right? Particularly my own grandkids, right? But anyway, so Spider. This is so cute. Because it's just, such an optimist, this little optimist. And he goes, he shows me a propeller from an airplane that's, I don't know what it is, some sort of sculpture thing now, on, on um, eBay. And he just thinks that would be nifty for Christmas, right? <laughs> I just had a laugh. I'm going, okay. Well, it would be nifty for Christmas. If would I was nifty. his age, I would think that would be quite nifty. Yeah, if, if you happen to see my um, the post I did Sunday on the in the Facebook club, um, I uh, I did, oh, I don't know what I was doing. Oh, I know what I was doing. I was googling the world to see if I could. That's basically what I think of it now when I'm looking for information. Kind of googling the world, <laughs> and. Um, uh, This is sort of a light pink mauve color. Uh, John was we're talking about Christmas, you know, well, grocery lists, and um, and we don't have one of those refrigerators that'll do a list. But even if it did, they don't print it out, right? And I was talking about this thing I had got from my um, ex mother in law, um, not not too long ago, and. Um, she, uh, I got her this, because she was having trouble with vision, so it's this thing that went on the refrigerator, and you could talk to it, and then it would print out the list when you were ready, your grocery list. And I went to see if they even still had it. I think you could still buy it, but um, they it wasn't price. being supported anymore. I think that whoever had, you know, it, because there's other things that'll do that. But then, so then I was Googling, just say, well, doesn't matter. Just because I think there's a feeling it's just because Amazon doesn't have something that there's not it, it doesn't exist, right? But I think that's <laughs> silly. So, so then I'm googling, um, you know, devices that would make a Christmas list. Notice I'm using yellow oxide now up in the corners here, and um, uh, this was what I was talking about, Tara. For you, if you're watching this, um, yes, yeah, she's watching. Uh, you, you kind of, even if it's light, if you can kind of darken the, you know, the top, just it frames the the figure in. It makes it makes makes it's them want to stay there. Okay. You can vignette the figure in there. So that's all you're doing. So anyway, I ran across this. Uh, they said, well, they showed the different things people had, and then they said there are some companies that will go in and do the whole kitchen. And your your refrigerator and your cupboard, all with cameras, and they will notice what you've eat, put put in there, and what you've eaten and what you've cooked or whatever, and give you a grocery list. But they said in the in the and t not ton and cheek either. Said, but this is quite expensive. <laughs> really, <laughs> have someone come in and do all that? I think how rich do you have to be? Like Oprah rich, right? <laughs> Well, you know, if I was Oprah rich, I'd do that too, right, John? Oh, well, so I don't yeah. know. But then you've got to have the house that goes with that kitchen. You know, you, you wouldn't just have that. You'd have to have the, ha the rest of the house, right? Um, because you'd never get your money out of that kitchen unless you had the rest of the house that went with this, right? It's all got to tie together. It would all have to. Oh, it absolutely would. Sort of fun, right? So um, see how I just keep layering the colors? Lights and darks and, and piling on the snow. Um, hey, let's give Jules a big thank you for her donations that have been coming in. 
Fast and Furious using the Zilla system. Thank you so much, Jules. Thanks. So Jules has just been so kind to us every week. It just does something really nice and most appreciative. Where does Jules live, John? Can Washington we tell? Washington State, my dear. Washington State. Well, Jules, you know, a lot of my family lives there. And back up in, um, in, in um, not next to in 24, but in 25, John and I have a, a, have a trip planned up to Seattle, don't we, John? A yes. road trip. Road trip. In, in, in uh, the uh, early spring of, uh, of 25. So we'll get to meet Jules then. May and June time point. Unless, of course, my daughter Cinnamon decides to do a workshop this summer somewhere. We, well, she's going to do, and we just, they just haven't decided where yet. And I tell you, we have all these great plans, but then the holidays uh, really do take up a lot of. Uh, I don't, I don't want to sound like the. You sound like the Grinch who sold Christmas. I, I know I sound like Scrooge, but <laughs> but they just, you know, from, they're they're sort of a time suck. You know, I mean, just. They interfere. Bottom line, they interfere. Yeah, want anything done, everybody's busy. Yeah. Like John has got, we have a, a printer, you know, our lovely printer, which we bought a fabulous warranty for. Good for us, right? Smart move. And because um, otherwise we would have been sitting there with, you know, Very it'd be like the stock weight. market fell. Because that could have bought a stock for what that printer costs. And, um, and then it just quit working. But we had a warranty. Well, that's only as good as the guy that can fix it for you, right? But of course, they could fix it, but it's the holidays, right? Yep. So they really can't fix it, but they, but they, they're sorry. They would have liked to have fixed it, yes and yes, but then they didn't. So it's being fixed someday, right? Dot, dot, dot. Yep. dot, dot someday it's being fixed. Uh, absolutely being fixed someday. All right, so let's see. Let's just move off of this corner down into the bottom one. See, then we get all this background in, then we can do the... Um, the fun uh, stuff. The, 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 we'll finish their guy. Um, someone's going to say, how do you know it's a guy? Generally, guys have wider shoulders and... You can kind of tell from a distance. Not always, but, you know, we're going to say that's what we think he is. We're going to go with it. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, let's give Ann a big thank you for her donation that came through Stripe. Oh, thank you. Ann, that's so nice. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we still have that. Okay, now I've got to change brushes. Get down to the little small ones here. We'll come back and fool around with this some more too, but. Uh, once you see what I do, I do this always shaping this brush. Um, this is for you, Debbie. You've got an angle brush. If you, then you, when you wet it and put the paint on, you can then then just put paint on one side, kind of keep it flat. Um, just something to keep. In, if you make a mark and nothing happens, then load it again. But you want to sh shape these. That's when you're trying to get a, a skinny line. Well, no, I just want it. To, I want to paint on the edge so I can direct where the paint goes. Mm. See? See what I'm doing here? And I'm now I'm taking these. lines like this, letting a little bit of this blue show underneath. Yeah. Um, it looks very powerful. Yeah, it is. It's a... See how we start to bury him in the snow, but that's what happens if you're skiing down the hill and you're kind of making a turn. You can see where this knee's coming up here, 
just, you know, you're making a turn. What happens is, is that uh, you're, you can sh you can shove quite a bit of snow out and about. I know what I need. I need a different color, but I know where all my paints are because I organized them all. You should uh, be using everything. Should be in the, your one drawer. Everything that I'm using is in one drawer. So I'm looking at. Uh, that's not to say I can find it in the drawer, but at least I have a general. <laughs> I have a general place to look. Don't you think that's important? Yeah. You have a fighting chance. Of I have a fighting chance of finding it. Like all my yellows are in one section of the drawer, so now I can find it. This is a raw sienna. You could also use buff titanium for the snow too. Not it doesn't have to be white. A little bit that could be if you couldn't mix that. All right, let's just let's get a cat's tongue. Where's that? Well, maybe I'll use this one because it's kind of worn. See how this is worn? I'll use that. Okay, mix that color. So I need some um, paint in here. Now I got to get close to the figure. And you say, well, why wouldn't you do this and paint the figure on top? Well, there's so many different colors on top of him that um, for me it's easier to do that. Now we're, we need more titanium, but I know where that is too. I know, hold your breath, right? But I do know where it is. And uh, there. So I know where the colors are. I think if you've got anybody in your family that might ski, maybe a son or you skied when you were younger or you still ski or whatever the deal is with the skiing, if you know somebody, this would be a nice, I think you have time to paint this uh, uh, in time for the holidays to give this as a gift to somebody, um, myself, I think you would have time to do that. Now we just keep layering colors. This is the zinc white over here. It's unbleached titanium, the same as titanium buff. Titanium buff is from Golden. Yeah, they're 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 close. They're not exactly the same, but they're close. They're close enough. You know, I I can get that same color just with the raw sienna and white. Okay. Um, which is nice, right? Notice I'm always putting paint just on one side of my brush, not on both sides, and pulling it down on the figure like this, Put, putting it like that. Um, I got a green thumb, but you don't have a green thumb. I have a green <laughs> thumb. We should buy some plants. That must be a sign, John. What do you think? Absolutely. <laughs> think so? Might be a sign. You don't know. Never know. Never know. You just never know. Let's give Sharon a big thank you for her donation that came in through PayPal. Oh, thank you very much, Sharon. That's, uh, listen, you can't under you guys just don't know how much this is appreciated. And um Okay, now this is the next layer of white that's going on top of this. I don't want to cover it all up, though, because I want some of the blue to show through. Because I would paint white over the blue background. That blue's going to kind of bleed through a little bit. Um, a w way to think of that is like um, if you ever um, had the fabulous experience of your kids <coughs> maybe marking, <coughs> using markers on the wall. You, can, you, know, you know, like drawing pictures on your wall and you got to repaint the wall, right? But if you just repainted over it, 
the, bleed the, through. They would just bleed through. What I'm talking about, they would just bleed through. Yes? Yes, they would. They would just, the color would just bleed through. And so this is the same thing when you're painting something like snow. If the, you start with the blue, um, canvas and then you paint the snow on top of it um, the um, <sighs> colors are going to show through this is somebody says well I don't understand why you guys do underpaintings and how do you know which color it depends what color would you like to show through because it's going to show through because it's going to show through a little bit and um, that's why, like if you're doing flowers and say you're doing a field of flowers and you've, you've done all the green, um, um, grass and everything, and leaves, and you go ahead and put those, those flowers on, um, they won't, the red flowers won't show up over that red. You can't really get red flowers over dark green. And the reason is, like here's the grayscale. See my grayscale right here? I think I can use that other one for this. Where'd you put that other thing that I said didn't work? I put it back in the drawer because you said it didn't Was work. Was it a drawer somewhere? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So here. Oh, perfect. You guys. You guys. So one of the reasons in our color mixing journal, we tell you to see what your colors look like, black and white. So if you've got your red, which is this gray, and your grass, which is this gray, that it's just not going to show up if, you had, if it's black and white. So if you want that red to show up, because this, this color underneath is going to show it, if you want that red to show up, you've got to paint it white first and dry it. And then, um, uh, then, um, and then paint the flower color on. Now for the flowers in the back of the field that are back there, that um, uh, you want to, to show, right? And they, and they won't, you don't want them to be as bright because they're further away, then just paint those straight over the green and that will just mute them enough where they will look believable when you paint them. Yes and yes. See how we're leaving all this little bit of blue stuff showing through? Like that, this is using the zinc white. Wow, so it's it's already getting this third of the feel of the of the um, of the uh, of the snow, aren't you? It's getting cold. And don't you kind of kind of you kind of get that feeling now? And again, this is a you know figurative. I would call it a figurative abstract. So. Um, Put a little bit of orange in here because that's pretty. All right, now let's try, let's work on our, well, I can, it needs to be lighter down here now, see? Right where my hand is. So I'll just change brushes and lighten this up down here. Again, this is where you need that extra coat of paint. Um, see how this is covering a little bit different down here now? than the, the last layer. Yeah, see that? So you have to decide where you want your translucent colors and where you don't. Yes and yes. Do I want a warm white or cool white? Yeah? A white white? You know, a, you know, white white. Like for instance, maybe I want something whiter down in here. Now this is the second coat of white on this too. And it just, you got to see how it, it just makes a difference. I'd say that some of the things is that people just, they just don't put enough paint. Um, and you don't put it on all at one time though, see? You just don't put a glob of paint on there. You, you build it up. Um, in oil painting, for instance, um, in oil painting, they have to build it up or it'll crack. All right, it'll crack. And acrylics, they won't crack, but you won't get that effect. 
that you're looking for if you don't build up. So it's a matter of, of layers, and we talk about layers. Contrast and layers are the things we talk about most. And I would say, wouldn't you say, John? Layers, I think, is number one. Layers and then contrast. Yep. Those are the two things that discombobulate people. And that's a technical term. We hate to throw it out there like that, but... Uh... Yeah. Well, these, uh, this has been the day for terms. What was that? The cattywampus was another term I was describing. I want to, hey, we shout out to Rachel in, uh, over there in Israel who sent me her wonderful painting in of a um, Mardi Gras mask. Well, just a mask. Mardi, you just think about Mardi Gras as people that are more likely to do mass at Mardi Gras, but, you know, there have been mass celebrations forever, um, all kinds of reasons that people like mass, and it's um, all feathers and purple and everything. It's a really nice job. And, you know, uh, that made me think of that because I can't remember. If she was the one I used the term discombobulate with. I don't think so. Somebody yep. else. Um, well, it's been a long day. I caught up with a lot of personal art coaching today on Monday. I'm trying try not to do anything on Sundays anymore. I'm trying to take Sunday, at least one day off a week for me is Sunday. Okay. And so <gasps> what we do? We clean the studio. We clean the studio. Yeah, we clean the studio. And then we, we did uh, some house cleaning. And um, when my daughter moved to Michigan, she left us boxes and boxes of canned goods and what uh, all kinds cake of mixes food and items. all kinds of stuff that they couldn't put in the truck. And so those, you know, my my neighbor has about I think it's you know yeah she's had she's had twelve children or thirteen, but. She's probably got eight or nine of them living with her at any one time. So they've grown up since, <laughs> since she moved in, right? But I called she, she up. She loads and, them out. Yeah, I go. <laughs> the way I call, it sounded. <laughs> she, she only keeps eight on hand at a time. <laughs> and loads the other four on, on occasions. Well, no. But, I mean, I, did, I called her up and I said, hey, you know, uh, you, know, as, as, you know, as much as I appreciate Zinnemann thinking that we might want canned frosting, uh, just, but I mean, five cans of it, I think, is a little bit. You know, and, and six cans of ketchup kind of thing. I had to say, um, no, probably don't want that. All right. Back to our, I'm pretty happy with, well, no, I think I am, and then I look and try. It's all right. You're we'll work, there. We'll work on there. the figure now. Yep. Now, we've got a lot done in an hour for a 9 by 12 painting, don't you guys oh, think you so? Oh, you did great. We're going to give Debbie a thank you for her donation that came in through Venmo. Oh, thank she's you. she's taken in the fishbowl. We appreciate that much. Fishes. So much. All right, I'm going to start using my Artisto pens. Now, the thing about these things is they take a long time to get started. Probably People the most... People take that long. They feel like they do to me. But once they're going, then you don't have to do much. Once you've got them, you've got them. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. A little triangle here back here to sh indicate the side of the goggles. And uh, there's a little bit of white here. And let's get the black ones. Where did I put the black ones? I'm talking to misorganized here. I should know these things, right? Yes, ma'am. Why would you think that, John? You'd think that, wouldn't you? <laughs> I would think so. What? I don't understand why. We just did it. Yeah, but I, I know. I put some there. There's the black one. There's a black one. That's a Posca, but that'll work. Oh, no. Now you're mixing brands. Now I need a little triangle right there. And then a dark line across the front here like this. Dark line on each side of those goggles here. And um, I 
square across the bottom of the chin, okay? All right, that worked, yes and yes. So while that's drying, um, we'll see what those fun little brushes, those little tiny uh, detail brushes. And let's see what we can do here. And now that everything's had a chance to dry, we can start adding color. Can you fix a Posca pen when it just is dumping paint out of the tip? It sounds like your tip's not seated anymore. You pull the tip out and clean it. They come out of there. Clean it. It probably has a clog on the back or something. It's just, it's just pouring the ink out or the paint out. Okay, let me dry it. Let me dry those because otherwise we'll smear it. All right, so I want a little bit of the orange color on this side of his face. And a little bit of the zinc white here. Let's goggle like that. You see you got a little drop of paint down there from your Posca pen. Right here? Yep. We just ran over a bird, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Ginger, you're such a terrible person. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. I can't believe you say anything about birds like that. Cruelty to animals. So this, his jacket comes up behind his helmet. I got some yellow here. <laughs> I'd like to thank Susan for her donation that came in through Super Chat. A small donation to buy this poor guy a left hand. <laughs> You're so funny. Got uh, something dark this side of his face. All right, so far so good. Now we're just pulling around here with the rest of this. You don't want any straight any any one particular line. You just want to indicate that there may be something, but um, that's why we're just putting little bits of color. All right, and like for instance on his ski gloves, we're just gonna, you know, cause hands kind of like that, it's kind of darker there. And we'll, we're, he's gonna have a ski pole, okay. And okay, so that has to kind of dry a little bit. Something darker at the end of his mittens. So let's see. Um, Well, sort of a light pink up here. Hey, we'd like to thank Melinda for her super chat. This is her first super chat on a live stream. Wow, how, how are we looking? Well, I think we're looking good. Just ask us. Well, I don't know how we're looking. We're just kind of curious, <laughs> right? <laughs> a 
Reds are one of those colors where you almost you have to do several coats and they don't show up. It doesn't show up. We would have had to have painted him totally white first and then done the reds. Again, we don't want a straight line here. Okay. Just don't want a straight line in. Let's see. We don't even want that much of the mouth on him, even less than that, hard to believe, but that's too thick. Just barely want to see the suggestion of a mouth here, right? Because like I said, we don't want to do too much detail. All right, back to the, the, the yellow. And the oranges on his ski suit. Let's give Tinta a truckload of thank yous for her donation that came in through the PayPal system, and she's got a few tickets in the old fishbowl. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I put all my luminous colors in one, in one place. Spot. In one spot. In one spot. All together. All together. And this says luminous rose, doesn't it? Yes and yes. So a little bit right there. Moment's notice. I want some of that rose. luminous rose kind of up by its face. Um, Careful, gentle. Yeah, I mean, just really, yeah, let's take a little bit of this white, put it right there. Over here, just take a little bit of that into the luminous rose. I want a light pink and I can't get it. That's the one thing about um, ski suits these days is that um, they're in bright colors, you know what I mean? Bicycle riders and um, uh, and guys like that are, you know, you know, really bright colors. Makes it kind of fun when, particularly when you're watching them race, going down the hill and stuff, you can kind of see them, right? Let's see, this is too wide here, so let's narrow the strap here, like so. Okay, it's small stuff, but you know, can, can kind of work. And uh, I want some sort of turquoisey green color uh, on this hat too. There's a lot of little colors on his hat, on his rim of his hat, which we want pretty light. The thalo green and white make a beautiful turquoisey blue, not green, which is surprising. You get this lovely turquoise blue color. Kind of went down too far, but it's all right. There, oh, there you go. There's our goggles. Um, things like this you can do with just little bits of color surprise places. You know, you don't have to do too much, but that can be impressive. Just just altering blue and magenta makes some nice kind of dark purples. I want some of that in here like this. Let's see, maybe I'll do it on the inside of his leg here. Again, I'm not saying what happened, it's all in snow, so you don't have to say much. We're just trying to imply there's a dark shadow right there. 
this side. Okay. And then see I have a see this flat line right here, see that? That should curve. Small stuff, but you know, it's just again we talk about shape and you know. So that I want that to curve out like that, like the shoulder. I want that to curve. I want um this to be a brighter red. This to be a brighter red. Now, here's the thing. When you're, when you varnish a painting, a lot of times you can say, well, I just, the, I had the red and then it dried and then it didn't show up. So there's two problems that can happen to you when you're painting using an iPad, as, which I'm doing. You're, I'm using an iPad for my, uh, to watch, see my reference. Because, and the reason I like an iPad is you can do this and blow up the picture and see in detail what you're trying to paint. Yes and yes? The thing of it is, is because it's backlit, like your television is backlit, yeah? So the colors appear brighter, don't they, John? Absolutely. And so you're, you're, you're just kind of killing yourself trying to get it to look like that, and it doesn't. Yeah? You can only get so close. Yeah, you can only get so close, and that's... Reflective light versus trans, transmitted light. Yeah, it can only get so close, uh, and then it, can't, then it doesn't do it anymore. Let me dry him. Well, maybe he could just sit there. I'll show you some stuff. Let me just show you what's uh, going on here. Well, you can't, you can't um, back out too much. For those of you who may not be aware of it, can, how far can you back out, John? I, I have to come over there to back it out. Oh, well, John will have to come over and back this out. But uh, before he does, I can show you this one. This is our um, holiday Michigan house. It's a sort of winter house with a snowman. That will be released um, before the end of January, sometime probably between Christmas and New Year, this is going to be released. Uh, and we think this is a really fun one. And if you guys have a little time to paint during the holidays, we can show you that one. John's going to change the, um, the zoom on the camera. It's just do that manually. This is coming in January in our academy. This is an impressionistic uh, a painting of, of Van Gogh, 20 by 20, and done in his style as if Van Gogh did a self-portrait, okay? That's what this is, all right? And it's, it's, it's kind of neat, I think. It's a different, again, we, our, for our purple members who, who not only have wave and water, but they also have, we're, we're focusing on people and portraits and different ways to paint people. So this will be for them. And then this week we released um, this 20 by 20 still life of this poinsettia. And which is really nice. And I got to give a shout out to Tara because when she did hers, she had a little stem coming here. And I like that idea. I wish I'd put one in. I thought the stem was great. Um, and it reminded me of an artist that we also teach called Martin Head. And he did these giant flowers. You know, he had these great stems and so forth. And it was painted in the style of the still lifes we've been teaching on YouTube and in the academy this past year where you have the dark on one side and it goes to the light and see how it's kind of darker up in here. And, and you have all these layers of color on the leaves and the old chopping, uh, chopping board, you know, kind of an old you know, wooden board. Uh, this is, you know, it kind of takes the poinsettia, but everybody paints and it's just a different way. And I think this is the kind of thing you could paint and, um, you know, have uh, hanging in your house, you know, uh, for every holiday. Don't you think, John? Oh, absolutely. And if you don't, if you're not an Academy member and you'd like to paint just this, um, you can buy it as a downloadable lesson. And this week is, we're running the special. Uh, how much off, John? It's quite it's a bit. Thirty percent off. Thirty percent off, it's and like it's thirty-five bucks or something. Think right so. Now. You save thirty-five dollars if you were to buy this as a downloadable this week. Okay. So he's just gonna change the camera again. Whoops. There we go. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So if I'm happy with the snow now, what I can now do is um, put in the ski pole. And I'm going to do that using tape. So this is dried enough, I think, where um, I'm going to do it. And it's got to be at this angle. 
and it's coming up uh, no it's still got to be it's got to be at this angle and you can kind of use the tape to pull it and say it's got to be like right there okay and then we'll do the other piece it's got to taper down a bit it'll be the ski pole will be a little bit wider where his hand is taper down to nothing I'll take a palette knife and what we call burnishing it down. This is still probably too wide. There you go. And we'll stop it right here. Okay. And that's, you know, if someone says, I just can't paint a straight line, well, you don't have to paint a straight line. You just use tape and you can paint one yourself. So then if you have water on the brush, you got to wipe that off. Got a little bit of burnt sienna and purple, I think, of that maroon color. That's pretty fat. Yeah, but I've got to have a white highlight, so let's just go for it, right? If I, mine's too fat, then don't do yours that fat. <laughs> skinny it up. Skinny you it up. You can always come back and skinny it up a little bit, too. Get snowflakes on it and stuff. Okay. You can hide it. All right. Now, what I want to do there is just dry that, okay? Make sure your painting is pretty dry before you had to try to do the tape, okay? Because um, what's the brand of the detail brushes you've been using? Um, I'm really this is a new brand that they mm -hmm. let us try it out, and I really like them. The but brand I, something in it. They're um, the silver tips. They've got the, they've got they're just similar to what we were using before, but they're called um, uh, Zen Art. And they're really nice. They're they're designed to, for probably more for watercolor painting and, and and flow paints and stuff. But they work very well with this. They're a little bit stiffer than the ones we were using before. Yeah. So I've did, did I dry that? No. Let me just dry that real quick. Okay? We well, just did dry it, but did I dry this? Was that yeah? Oh, I dried the tape. Okay. All right. I did dry it. Okay. All right. That that's good. Good to know. <laughs> I'm going to come on top of this. Get some snow all over it and glaring and that's why I had to do it a little fatter. So I had to skinny this up, right? Um, I know how cool is that, right? And then we're gonna do a little we're just gonna uh, like part of a letter C but flatter and then just do like, like a little round thing right here. Like the end of the ski pole right here, like that. Yeah. And uh, all right. Perfect. All right. There's our the ski pole. Now yeah, let's just uh, just to get this to work. Now we got to put let me go back and put a little bit of white all over him, kind of places where. So we'll just we want that white and uh, a little tiny bit of the um, um, raw sienna on this. A 
kind of go over his arm like that so you can show that it's buried. Uh, want some dark right here on the inside of his arm, right there. So the shadow would be, I don't care what kind of person you're painting, chances are the inside of that arm is, um, if it's cloth or something, there's going to be something there. Okay. So what, what I'm doing there is just, you probably should find me a frame too, babe. Uh, I already got one picked out for you. You already have one picked out? Yes, ma'am. This is not amateur hour. We are professionals. Okay, so like red and ultramarine blue, okay? That makes a nice dark maroon purple. I'll show you how that works. Just, it, if you use cad red, uh, it will go brown on you, okay? So it has to be naphthal crimson. If it's not naphthal crimson, I'm pretty sure what that was, but look. Okay, that wasn't the naphthal crimson. Because if you use an orange, it'll go brown. So it's got to be your pure, pure red. Here's an ample crimson deep, which is already the darker color. Okay, but if you want something just a little bit darker, but not go brown on you, you can use a color like that. And then I want um, I want this yellow orange color to come here and then come back down. That's that cad yellow light. I want to just have that like that. Uh, make sure we have the because acrylic dry darker. Just make sure we have the color around here. All right, so let's do this is something dark with his mouth. It's, it's very little to to um, to do much detail with, but we're gonna. Yeah, what I want is that I want this got these goggles to be like remember I talked about this triangle that has to be here over the nose and then underneath like that. I mean, they have to be level here at the sides to really kind of show that. Let's give Anna Maria thank you for her donation that came in through the PayPal system. Yeah, thank you very much. And, you know, Anna Marie and some of these you guys that have been with us, you've been with us for a while and you've always been so supportive. And i got to tell you, <clears throat> John and I are very much appreciative of that. And um, you, you, sometimes you guys just don't know what the difference. Just having you all come here and just support us while we're, um, um, while we're teaching and show up for our classes. This is huge. See, it's a little bit of white on this stuff. And then I've got some places I want titanium white, and others are where I kind of, you know, dulled it down, right? So if I back up from this now, even though you don't see his hand, we can imply it by just adding a, a color, like a little drop of color right there. See? We can, um, and the uh, curve of a color like this, just like this, like a curve, and like that, right? We can imply the color in something that's happening by just skipping something, just skipping a space and adding the color. So th that's kind of, I love that. I love this kind of painting. It's, it takes a while, to, believe it or not, this, this kind of painting takes us a while to figure out, doesn't it, John? Because 
you got it's because you got to ask yourself what can I erase and still and still um, there we go I need that right there in this one like that blue What can I take away and still and still convey that that's what's going on here, and not, and still have it not see? It's a very lot of rest area here. This is very busy up here, and very busy next to him. But then when you look at it, it's very. We got a rest area here. We got a rest area coming up from the bottom. And um, that's kind of cool in itself, right? Okay, and I think I wanted this to be a little skinnier on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is, oh, John, is, John made a good point. You can, if I want to show it that's up in the air like that, I can do a little bit of a blue right here. Now this, 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 this color right here is deliberate. Okay. Delivered right there, that little bit of color right there. <clears throat> and this one, yeah, I just kind of thin that up at the bottom here. All right. There we go. I think I've just about got this guy. Where did you say my frame was? Oh, well, it's, it's back yonder. You know, last time you said you were framing, you were still painting. I'm thinking gold, though. It's going to be right here, my queenness. All right. So that's, um, hang on a second. I've got to do one more thing. I just don't want to know where it is, right? Always one more thing. Yeah, sounds like the price is right. Just one more thing. <laughs> one more. Just one more. You can feel the motion in this painting. Catch up. Again, I don't want to lose my dark up here in the corner. Like that. And my dark over here. Okay. I'm going to just show you what this would look like in a frame when John put it. Oh, here. Let me just move this out. And we have to come back and over anyway and back it back out. So, we, you, know, if, you know, one thing you might want to consider is uh, giving yourself the, the gift of um, personal art coaching for the holidays. Maybe somebody wants to know what you'd like. And um, uh, maybe you want to have uh, just, a, you know, maybe for some of you it would just be the... the to just uh, be part of our group as an orange member and have access to all the um, the traceables that we have, okay? And so there's so many uh, things that if you think about it uh, that are kind of neat. And uh, so uh, if, so we will be doing the, um, uh, we'll be doing the um, story, time. story time on the, uh, that's all this week. We'll be doing that, okay? And uh, so as I see this, you see, as I'm looking at this in the frame, then I see a few little things that I want to change. And that's that's why I'd like John to put it in the frame. Well, you know what it does for me? Probably, this is, maybe, here's the thought, the maybe you would just get an old frame 
and put that on your picture, uh, nothing that you want, you care about, so that um, it frames the, the image in for you. So if you're doing anything, yeah, there we go. Uh, you can kind of, you can see where Where's I going with this? Where would the pole be in the left hand? Isn't it back behind him, straight back? Yeah, it's straight back. It's like that behind him. He's holding it back this way. It's just, it's, it's all just, buried just in Just Google snow. some pictures of downhill skiers. You yeah. know, don't just ever paint something like this. With, just don't take my word for it. That's, you know, you want to do that. Yeah, I, I would get a few. Uh, you know, just. But it goes uh, out the back because that's goes the one out the back. in on. Because he's. Other ones are out. Holding his balance, and the skis are in front, but we we haven't shown you They're those. Buried. I had I had some options on when I did this because well, we had options. a couple of references we could have used, and I deliberately did this reference because um, it makes it it's, it looks very fast. To me, it looks like but a also, fast I game. wanted to make it you know really where you wouldn't be worried about being able to do it at all. I wanted you to really. Um, be able to just not not sweat it, saying I can paint that; it'll be all right. I know I can do it, and you'll know you can do it because um, we kept it very very simple. Yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. Yes and yes. I mean, he him looks very fast, doesn't he, John? Looks very fast. I think so. All right, let me get the top of his helmet right It'd here on this side. It'd be a great painting big. Huh? It'd be a great painting big. Oh, yeah, wouldn't it? There you go. Now we see the rest of his helmet. And I'm going to go ahead and sign this right here, I think. Yeah, right here. I'll sign that right here. And um, I might use them. Let's see, do I have one of these blue, blue Artisto pens I might use? Okay, I'm not sure why you're looking in the drawer because they're back behind the iPad in the little cup. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See? See my pens? That's half of them. This would be pretty right here. Oh, the pur purple would be nice. I don't know. What do you guys? <laughs> now, see, that's the problem. Now we're giving you too many to choose from. The purple. So what's neat about these, and they're new, the newest ones. What's neat about these guys, you know, we have two, we have two sets. See, ha. <laughs> what's the neat about this cool. is that you can see the inside. You can see when the pen goes down. When they first come out, you couldn't do that. They were no, solid, but now you can see body. when they start to get empty. So uh, you'll just have to trust me that I signed it here in blue because <laughs> I don't want you to have to wait while I sh I shake this up. All right. But thank uh. you for. Participating. Well, we could take a second and go over to the um, Facebook club because I did bring it on. Oh, you want to do that? You guys want to see? What, want to see what? Who's doing what on our Facebook club, you guys? Let me just take you over there while the Queen is doing final touches. Let me okay. switch her. Go over to number five. Here we go. Slide on over. All right, so here we are. This is at Facebook.com, and this is my account that I use to check the system to see what normal people can see instead of admin people. And this is Morgan Polo. He does our T-shirts. And to find Ginger Cook, up in here in the left corner, you have where you can search, and I first searched for Ginger Cook Acrylic Painting Club. You put in Ginger Cook, you know, you may be cooking with ginger. Well, you got all kinds of stuff. So you have to get into at least the painting or artist. If you're the artist, you can see all the different sites that she has. The club, that's not hers, and uh, this one. So we're, we're going to, you know, get yourself in the habit of going to the painting club. Let me just back it out. The Ginger Creek Acrylic Painting Club. If you have not logged in or created an account yet you have to you'll be you will fill out i want to join 
it's a private club. You just have to say you're over 18 and then the mods will let you in. So this is the basically the homepage of it and you can scroll down and see what most relevant newest ones, newest activity. Uh, here's Debbie, she did the lock of the forbidden door lock. Beautiful job on well, that. One of our uh, tutorials. Yeah, one uh, of the tutorials. There's another one of Debbie's. Debbie's been busy. Yeah, Debbie's uh, just signed up for the academy and she um, uh, she paints about three times a day. She just, um, uh, she just, uh, you know, so, so we see her, her posting a lot. Uh, and, Steffi uh, Jane here is mentioning a brush holder. So after you wash your brushes, hang them up so they drip dry. Excellent suggestion. I have to get one of those. And once in a while, we'll ask questions. How do you store your paints? Last time I looked, there was only two paintings here. Oh, well, we got a couple more now. That's, I put, I put my, I, I, I answered that too. Oh, did you? Uh huh. You can look how so I store my paints comments. too. So we have a bunch. Did you put your picture in of how you do your paints? You just do yours in a rack. So. Um, so this, so this is the interactivity that we have going on. Some good idea. Holy moly! This person has too many paints, Becky. Jeez, oh Pete. So you can see what people are doing. You have questions and answers, solutions. Etc. Yeah, uh, Wednesdays and, and Saturdays, people post their original paintings, and, yep, and during the week, the people post our here, tutorials. Put in one of her puppy dog ones. Um, you puppy know, that's dog. what they do. They post our tutorials. So Everybody that's did. just uh, what we're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try and do this pen, John. Just, okay. uh, just forget it. it. I, I can't. I can't get it. No problem. So I'm just uh, try to just. All right, so that's basically a little introduction to the Ginger Cook Acrylic Painting Club. If you're not a member, we invite you to join us. We'd love to have you there. And let's bring it back to the queen. I'm doing, I'm just signing with a brown pen. Oh, that looks like gold to me. Is it? No, it looks good. Well, it kind of looks gold. That's nice. Whatever it is, I'm signing with that one. Because I just, um, <laughs> that's I just, what I'm using. I actually was trying to do it with one of the little brushes, and um, it didn't. So I always, uh, you know, if you're listening to our our story times, I might tell you how we why I do the uh, red stripe through the uh, for, through my name whenever I uh, paint paint that. And I remember the first time uh, my ex-husband George saw one of my paintings with the with the red stripe through it. He thought we were getting divorced, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, but that was not the case, right? Well, not at that time. Not at that time. We did, but uh, not then. And that was so funny. Probably should have been assigned and done it, but I didn't. So there you go. All right. So all right, we've got a downhill skier, and we feel the speed, right? We've done and it. The reason I don't want a line going back from here for a ski pole is because that would take your eye out of the painting. You don't ever want lines doing that, something like that. So even if... Even if my reference photo would show that, I wouldn't show that. Does that make sense? Because I don't want the lines. I do not want that. Um, and you ask, well, wait a minute. You have one on the left. And the reason we have it on the left, Because that 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 this is a stop here right. and it brings you on. Everything's yeah. bringing you into the picture. Yes? Yeah. So we that's, read left to right. Yeah. Everything's bringing you into the picture. And that's why. All these things you have to think of. Well, there is a lot to think of, John. It absolutely is a lot to think of. And um, just feeling a little bit more of the snow. Um, sometimes just a fast thing like that can be impressive. All right, impressive. So there you go. We thank you for hanging out with us tonight. We're we hoping you having a wonderful, wonderful uh, week. And I know it's a busy time for all of you. Um, Maybe on story time we'll tell you some of the weird things that have happened to us this week. Won't won't bother with it now. Appreciate everybody who's been commenting on story time, and I and I intend to reward that eventually. <laughs> right. So anyway, all right. I'll stop. We got a downhill skier. Oh. I hope you guys had fun with it. Love you guys. Merry Christmas. Thank you, mods, for being here. Hope. Uh, Happy holidays for those of you who are, are not doing Christmas, but are just uh, celebrating in this time of year. So hang in there, and uh, we look forward to seeing you 
uh, throughout the week, even though it won't be a li it'll be a live show, but you won't see me, just me painting, telling stories. You see the hands. The Bye. magical hands. Bye everyone.